Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio. I'm Khalid Maidan and today I'm going to be talking to you about the different grafts that might be used for when your patient has an ACL reconstruction or an ACL repair. So a graft is a piece of tissue from elsewhere in the body that might be used to form your patient's new ACL when it comes to their ACL reconstruction. I'm going to be talking to you about what the different grafts are and some of the pros and cons that may be discussed when it comes to those grafts. If you're new to the channel and if you enjoy this video, please hit that like button. It will always help the channel in getting more physiotherapy information out to the rest of the world. But otherwise, let's dive in. So there are three main different grafts which can be used when your patient has an ACL reconstruction. The first is the patella tendon graft, the second is a hamstring graft, and the third is a quadriceps tendon graft. Now the patella tendon graft and the hamstring tendon grafts are by far the most commonly used. So those are the ones that we're gonna focus on in this video, starting with the patella tendon graft. So the patella tendon can be found on the anterior knee, running from the patella to the tibial tuberosity. For this graft, the surgeon may take a small strip of tendon tissue from the mid third of the patella tendon. Within that graft, they will also take a little bit of the patella bone and a little bit of the tibial tuberosity bone at each end, which is why this graft is sometimes called a BTB graft or a bone tendon bone graft. So the main reason why a little bit of bone is taken from the patella and the tibial tuberosity as well as the tendon tissue in the middle is because it means that the surgeon can then attach the bones of the graft to the existing bone of the thigh bone or femur and shin bone, the tibia, when the new ACL graft is put in place. And that means that the healing can be more improved because of the bone on bone healing. This might be a reason why the patella tendon graft is suggested to be the strongest graft option and why it may have the least rate of re-rupture among the different graft options. So a couple of things to bear in mind for whether or not your patient is the right candidate for a patella tendon graft. One thing that's always considered is whether or not your patient is going to need to do a lot of kneeling. So this might be relevant for your carpenters, your plumbers, or those who have a job within cleaning where they might be spending a lot of time on their knees. As a result of this, it can put a lot of pressure or weight through the anterior knee because that's the surface that they're gonna be kneeling on and this can be quite painful for your patient who has had a patella tendon graft. So that might be something that your surgeon discusses with your patient who may need to do a lot of kneeling. Now the other thing that we need to be aware of as physiotherapists is that when our patient has had a patella tendon graft, it effectively makes that existing patella tendon a little bit weaker and therefore a little bit more vulnerable to a patella tendinopathy. So therefore, when you're going through your ACL reconstruction rehab with your patient, always be looking out for that anterior knee pain or pain along the line of the patella tendon to see if your patient may be experiencing a patella tendinopathy and therefore adjust your rehab accordingly to try and reduce their symptoms. So next up is the hamstring tendon graft. So this graft is most commonly taken from the semitendinosus muscle, which is the hamstring muscle that runs from the posterior thigh and whose tendon swoops around to the medial side of the knee before inserting onto the anteromedial tibia in an area called the pezanserine region. You will see that the gracilis tendon sits very close to that of the semitendinosus tendon. And thus, a hamstring tendon graft is sometimes enhanced by taking some of the gracilis tendon as well. So one thing you may have noticed from that is that there is no bony attachments that are taken in addition to the tendon tissue when the hamstring graft is harvested. And for that reason, it is sometimes suggested that the hamstring graft is not quite as strong as the patella tendon graft, when it comes to surgical repair, which may result in slightly higher rates of re-rupture amongst hamstring tendon graft patients. However, the research suggests that the difference in the rate of re-rupture between the patella tendon graft and the hamstring graft is not statistically significant, and therefore the hamstring graft is still very commonly used around the world of surgery. Now, one common positive about 
using a hamstring tendon graft is that the scar at the site of the semitendinosus tendon is far smaller to that of the patella tendon graft. Therefore, this can be a lot less painful for patients, and particularly for the patients who need to do a lot of kneeling, this can be the preferred option for them. So one thing that's really important to mention about the hamstring tendon graft is that it will naturally create a vulnerability for the semitendinosus tendon, the semitendinosus muscle, and the hamstring group as a whole after that graft is taken. So when your patient has had an ACL reconstruction with a hamstring tendon graft, it's really, really important to include lots of hamstring rehab within your plans. Now, this is particularly relevant to the sporting individuals because in high level sport, particularly those that involve sprinting or kicking a ball, perhaps within football or rugby, hamstring injuries are really, really common. Not only that, but when your individual has experienced a hamstring injury for the first time, the rate of re-injuring the hamstring muscles is incredibly high. Therefore, once again, it's super important to include lots of hamstring rehab within your therapy and make sure that that athlete has really strong hamstrings before they go back to sport to make sure they are not at risk of re-injury of those hamstrings. Now it's really important for us to say that the information in this video can hopefully give you some good tips but shouldn't be considered thorough medical advice. And the decision as to which graft is used always should be made as a shared decision between the surgeon and the patient themselves. But otherwise everyone, if you'd like to see more from Clinical Physio, hit the description below where you'll find details of our Instagram account and our website clinicalphysio.com where there are loads of resources for student and junior physiotherapists. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you really soon right here on Clinical Physio.